real people here on Mejmez TV is the lovely Chantal Sinha. Hi. Totally rawsome guest is what we've got today. Yeah. Thank you. I think the rawsome thing is it's probably says it all to yeah. be fair that we are here in the middle of your wonderful dinosaur land. Thank yeah. you so much for You're inviting very welcome. Us over. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Uh, well, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm like living every kid's dream right now. Yeah. Crying. And we're going to get on to your life with your dinosaurs and especially with with Trixie and Blue. Yeah. I think they are like the major turning point in, in your life. Yeah, definitely. But what we always like to do with this show is we like to take you back. We yeah. Wanna, we want to start from the beginning. We want to know who you are. Yeah. And, uh, and and all about you, if that's all right. So yeah, of course start it is. from the beginning, sweetheart. So you are 35 years old. Yep, that's correct. And you have lived in Sheffield all of your life. Yep, most of my life. Yeah. Yep. Never gone away at any point. Yeah, I did move away for a few years. That was the first business venture that I had and I realised my confidence and everything else grew from that. Oh, really? Yeah, so I moved back to Sheffield and roaring to go. Absolutely. <laughs> roaring to go, you see, it's all there, it's all there. Um, <laughs> So you, you were brought up by your parents and yes. you lived with your brother. Who were your parents? Yeah, so my mum is Catherine and my dad is Sean. Yeah, and then I've got a younger brother, 18 months younger than me, Lee, as well. Yeah, yeah. so we grew up just in an average household, really. Mum and dad just had average jobs and went to work every day. And, yeah, I was the unique one, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> well, there's definitely that about you, yeah. <laughs> Your, your relationship with Lee is 18 months uh, younger than you. Did you have yeah. a great relationship? Yeah, he's like my little brother, my son and everything yeah, else. All yeah, rolled yeah. Into, played the mummy role a few times with him. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but we've got a really good relationship. He helps me a lot and I help him and things. And yeah, it's nice. I love that. Sibling love. Yeah. So when you were... When you were growing up in the in the early years, and yep. you've got your, your mum and your dad, and they're still together now. Yes. Yeah. What yep. was it like growing up? Yeah, it was good. It was a bit quiet. We we went on holiday and stuff, but we we didn't really have much like the older children had better clothes and things and had better things going for them. So we we just had like what I call just the average bring upbringing yeah, yeah. really. But was it yeah. happy? Yeah, it was sometimes happy, sometimes sad. Think same in every single household, yeah. isn't it really? So, when you say you know there were some sad times, yeah. do you mind telling me about some of yeah, those? Yeah, some of them were um, were ups and downs. There was a lot of like my dad suffers um, a little bit with his mental health and things, so we had a lot to deal with as children. Okay. I kind of grew up a lot sooner than I think I should have done. Um, so yeah, once I got to 12 years old, I was like a, a young adult that oh, looked, really? looked, yeah, looked after myself quite a lot, looked after my little brother and stuff and just helped my mum when we could really, mm. yeah, to obviously help my dad. Mm. Did you resent that at any point? Um, sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. As I've got older, I've realised that it was my path and I just accepted that sometimes life didn't go as easy as what you expected it to go. Mm. Yeah, but that's what always picked me back up to do well because I felt the rock bottom and I've built myself back up from it as well, so. Anything anything after rock bottom? Yes. It's just beautiful, isn't Definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. So it's like enlightening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally so, agree. When you were around 12 years old and you, you kind of became a bit more of a carer for your brother. Yeah. Um, you're at secondary school. Yeah. Now, I know you have mentioned to me before. Yeah. You, you, I, I think <laughs> you were, I would say, a typical teenage girl. Yeah, I was. I was very loud and very bubbly, got loads of energy. No, I can't imagine that <laughs> you. Not a fan. Yeah. Yeah, but it sometimes did get me into bother at school. Yeah, so I loved school. I'd like to say I loved school. When I was there, I didn't really like it. But then, obviously, moving on, looking back, I wish I could go back and do a few things differently. But Don't we, we all? all say that. Don't we all? You know, yeah. look, if I knew what I knew now, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was more confusion. I didn't know where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And with the family that I'd got in the background, they didn't really like push me to my limits to excel myself. So I didn't really find myself in my teens. I was yeah. quite lost, I think. I can see you've got a lot of love for your mum and dad. Yeah, definitely. And you have. And yeah. I think that's been a roller coaster from, from what I can understand with yeah. you guys and, and you understanding different parts of your relationship with them. Yeah, that's correct. But there has been parts of the family as well that has just really kind of 
not pushed you forward at all, like yeah. you just mentioned. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's always been like, I don't know, we, we don't really come from a, a family background as to where they push us to like go to college and university yeah. and stuff like that. So finding yourself when you don't really know what you're into and things, it was quite difficult growing up. And I mean, we didn't really have much support with school or anything back then either. So because I was this loud, bubbly, like child that was just always messing around in class and like just not concentrate. I had no concentration level whatsoever. Like give me something practical to do and yeah. I was all over it. Give me a book and wording and writing and it didn't interest me. So I did get myself into quite a little bit of trouble being mischievous at school and I didn't really have the support from school to, to help me excel in areas. They just tarnished me as being, being naughty or boisterous. So I spent most of the time in the corridors oh, <laughs> being told off. With, with your head against the wall back in the day. Like, yes, 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 I yeah. have done that. <laughs> Luckily, the cane had stopped that time <laughs> I got to school. And the slipper. Yeah. We won't go into that. Oh, I got that. the slipper. <laughs> yeah, we definitely got that. That's another story for another day. Um, so, you know, it, it must have been, been hard because you're getting to that sort of age where there is no direction. And did you feel like there was no inspiration either? Yeah, There's there no were not Yeah, well, the only inspiration that I had really from being really young, my dad was, um, my dad did DJing until he was about, I was about eight or nine. Uh, so <laughs> just having him in the house with the decks on and the music, that's something that I always kind of clung to. I always loved the music. So I wouldn't want to sit down and watch television, but give me like a music. And I always wanted to do something with music. So that was kind of what opened my eyes up a little bit to what I wanted to do when like I was a little bit older, but I was still a bit confused whether yeah, to yeah, yeah. take a lady job role of hairdressing ah. or go down the, the, the role of like being a DJ with my dad. So yeah, I was a bit again, still confused even getting to the age of 15 when I actually did leave school. And then I started hairdressing at a local hairdressers in Eckersfield, where I'm from, in Sheffield. And then that just progressed. And yeah, I decided that I wanted to change a career come 17. So I did a, um, I did a Princess Trust music course. They, um, oh, yeah, they got me like um, a grant and everything to set my first um, DJ business up. Yeah, so, so. so you did become a DJ? Then? Yeah, I did, um, I did the course with Princess Trust. I got the grant. And then I bought all my, my speakers, my equipment, and I think I did it for about 12 months. Uh, yeah. What and kind of stuff were you playing? Yeah, well, I did like weddings and parties did and you? stuff. Yeah, but I wanted the club lifestyle of it all, but being 17 and yeah, underage yeah, yeah. to even go clubbing, really. Yeah, so it was like, do I want to do this? And then I met a boy, and it, ch it all changed from really, there. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. See, this one I can imagine, like, um, and you know, we're not talking, because we're not old. Me and you are no, definitely, definitely not, not old. 35 I mean, no, years young. I'm a little bit older <laughs> than you, but I'm still not old. Um, but there wouldn't have been many female DJs back then. No, so there wouldn't have been. So that would have been quite a unique selling point. Yes, in, in a well, way. now looking back, I do think that. Yeah. As I thought, oh, got to follow the crowd. Everybody's doing hairdressing yeah. and nails. So, yeah, but I didn't like the hairdressing side of it. So I wish I took the DJ role more off. Well, there's still time. Yeah, That's of course. That's what I always There's still time to bring that back with a dinosaur <laughs> yeah. on the next. <laughs> totally. And you, you made me laugh earlier because you were saying, you know, I have this impression that you've always been a bit of a Dell boy. Yeah. Or a Dell girl, <laughs> yeah. shall we say. My friends would probably agree. Yeah. Yeah. So you were telling me, at the age of 13, you actually had people queuing outside your mum's house yeah. for you to do their hair so yeah. you could go out. And yeah, because I used to be able to do French plaits and twists and stuff, so all my friends... They used to pay me ten pounds a head to do all the hair, <laughs> and I used to do all the hair, and then we all used to go out with the same hairdo. <laughs> oh, love it! Yeah. We all had those kind of things. Did you have a perm as well? Yeah. Like no, I didn't. But oh. I did. My mum always wanted. Well, my mum had one, but I always wanted one. But she never let me because my <laughs> my hair's never been that thick and stuff anyway. So, <laughs> so you you did the hairdressing. Yep. You you did that up to what age? Yeah, I was about sixteen, seventeen. So from thirteen okay. to sixteen, seventeen. Thirteen years. Yeah. Old. Yeah, Saturday job as a um, it, as like just washing hair, tea and coffee girl, sweeping yeah. up the hair and stuff. But so you've always 
then you've always wanted to work. Yes. You've always wanted to earn yeah. money. Yeah, I think I'm a workaholic. You to are, be aren't you? <laughs> yes. It's always been there. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Do you think it was because you saw you, you earned some money and you just thought, actually, this is good because I can buy what I want? Yeah. And that's I the think first it was, time you were able yeah, to do that. Yeah, I think it was mainly that. Being brought up like in a house that didn't have much money and constantly told, no, we can't afford it, it just made me realise that once mm. I grew up and I could earn my own money, what you put into it, you get out of it kind of and thing. You learned so, that at such an early yeah, age. Yeah, really young. Yeah, about 13, 14, I was saving money for from paper rounds and hairdressers and, and stuff, yeah. Because the thing is, that is so notice, noticeable about you yeah. is how hard-working you are. Yeah, everybody you notices stop, that. Yeah. And you do it with a smile on your face, yeah. and you're never grumpy. No. And that's quite <laughs> Very remarkable. rarely. <laughs> so you mentioned a few moments ago about you, it all changed when you met a guy. Yeah, correct. And yeah. who was the guy? I was 17, 18 years old, and I met a, um, a gentleman called Adam, who was the father to my children. Unfortunately, we're not together no more. Okay. But 18 years, we were together. 18 years? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so my life kind of got put on hold, and he had, he had three younger children that I brought up practically as okay. my own as well, yeah. So they was brought to us, and I looked after them and raised them and things, so... So this is your, your 17, 18 then? Yeah. You know, instantly becoming a mother of... Yeah, three of three. Children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then still Crazy. decided, and still decided to have some of your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that relationship, um, you know, it, it, it stopped you doing your DJing. It stopped you doing your hairdressing. Why? Yeah, I think just because the once I started doing the DJing and then I started obviously falling in love and stuff as you do at a young age, mm. you start finding different things that you wanted, and the, the DJing seems to be travelling further and further afar. And I just wanted to be as close as I could mm. to like bringing up the family that I'd kind of been yeah. accepted into. Yeah, so I kind of put everything on hold for me, being a bit young and naive yeah. and not really understanding where I wanted to be completely with life. Yeah, I put everything on hold. That was when I was about, I was about 18, 19 at that time. Did you feel that you were entering into a relationship that was like a ready-made family? Yeah. That was full of love? Yeah. That you were potentially going to get? A yeah. little bit more care. Correct. Yeah. I won't I won't really say full of love. I like obviously I was in love with Adam and um, but his children, they needed that little bit more and of love and support. That. And that made I've always obviously you can see I've always like admired children and like always gone down to their level and played with them and always drawn with them and things. So I think just having that like at home and them needing that, yeah. I put my all into that and, and then everything else, yeah, everything else slowly started yeah. like fading, yeah. So I just ended up in another like job where you're just gonna work nine while five coming home. What were you and doing? Yeah, so I started doing um, sales and customer service for um, Sheffield Trainers Company. Okay. Yeah, so I started like selling MVQs and stuff, which I actually really enjoyed it. I did it for about two, three years. And it was just, it was the money was coming in, it was paying the bills. So I was quite content with yeah, life yeah, at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, but then when I got to 25, I had my own little boy in Kyron, he's 10 now. So I had him, but then the next 12 months, I just went through this. I need to do something better for myself, for my children now. And yeah, so I moved to Lincolnshire. <laughs> so you, you were still with the father then? Yeah, we were still, I was still with him, but he was working away a lot. So oh, okay. that's kind of what we separated with. He was working away. I was stuck at home with, with his children and with my oh, child. Oh, and just I was just getting a bit fed up on a day-to-day -day basis. Hamster I just wanted wheel. better. Yeah, I just wanted a bit better. And where I... I say where I grew up, I say where I grew up because I grew up in Sheffield, but my mum and dad always had a caravan in Boston, Lincolnshire. Okay. So we used to go to Boston, Lincolnshire every single weekend. It was like Amazing. every weekend without fail. Our holiday was to Skegness every year or Ingham Elms or somewhere like that, which I loved as a kid anyway. And then, um, yeah, I just, we went to the, the pub on the caravan site where I grew up practically from Sheffield and the, um, the, the pub was empty and I just phoned it off off chance and thought, oh, wonder how much rent that is. And the gentleman come and met me the day after, give me an offer I couldn't refuse. So I opened my first original like business.